I look to St uh, Mr. Stephen Wolf, MEP, to close the case for the proposition. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, members of each side. It's really wonderful to be standing here before you today. It's often nice to be able to see a punchy debate that we've had between pugnacious individuals and know that hopefully I won't be flat on my face as I leave this chamber this evening, that I can walk out the door with my head held high. What I learn about debates like this, and I've really enjoyed, and I hope you have, the interventions of the points of information. I'm waiting for yours, young man, at some stage. <laughs> is how the arguments have been grasped on simply one side in this chamber tonight almost. It's surprising to me because I share so much and sometimes so little, I'm sorry Stephen, uh, with this side of the house. Like Kerry, I was born on a working class state in Moss Side in Manchester. I'm of mixed race, a black American grandfather, a Jewish grandmother, an Irish grandmother who came over here at the age of 14 to work when we, needed, when, we had people that need, when we needed people to come here after the Second World War. So do not tell me that I don't understand what it's like to grow up in a mixed race, working class background where we had very little. Do not tell me that I don't understand the issues of racism when I physically had to face it. Unfortunately, unlike my beautifully good-looking brothers Nathan and Michael, I have faded over time like Michael Jackson, but naturally. <laughs> I do need to make sure I go on more holidays to get some more melanin in me so that I can feel as though I'm in a comfortable place when they go out and they've got more people looking at them than me. But when I looked at this particular debate, I act like the lawyer that I was of 18 years before I joined the European Parliament. I first had to ask myself, what is the definition here? We look at two words. Two words are key. And I'm sorry, I'm not going to charge you for this. The first is elitist. What does elitist mean? Well, clearly, we have an element of elitism in here already. We have three wonderful elitists at the back. Why? Because they're in white tie, where we're simply in black tie. <laughs> but we're more elitist than you, because we're in black tie, and the most of you are not in any ties whatsoever. You are the third tier, the back of the row the back of the queue. But I'm going to look at the Cambridge Dictionary online. I'm sorry, I, I was looking at you and saying, why has someone already taken one of my jokes? <laughs> the Cambridge Dictionary has suggested that elitism is someone who believes that something should be controlled or owned by the richest or the best educated people around. Well, the last speaker for the proposition tried to make that point very clear, didn't he? He tried to suggest that only those who are educated should be able to make the decisions of our lives. Only those who go to institutions like this and get degrees from institutions like this should come into government and tell us what we think, what we say, what we eat. And you know what? Where there's life, there's hope, and I wait for that answer. <laughs> Well, I'm glad you come on to that, because it is the very next card that I had down there. The question is about liberalism. So far, I've heard wonderful statements how I want the rule of law, life, liberty and freedom. Well, I want that too, and so should all of you. We want to ensure that people, wherever they are, have the opportunities to get a good education, to ensure that when they're sick, they are treated healthily without having to face the cost. Hence the reason we have a wonderful NHS system in this country that should be preserved and protected. Why is it that when you don't have a home 
or like my brother, you have a serious illness like schizophrenia. You should have the country looking after them and providing the help, but they don't in many cases in here. And they don't because of your government when you were in government and the Liberal Democrats took away money for mental health services. So don't talk to me. Not just yet. I will take you later. I will wait. <laughs> but when it comes to liberalism, there are many definitions and many, many views. I looked at it up there. We have libertarianism, classic liberalism. We have neoliberalism, high liberalism, low liberalism. My goodness me, what I couldn't see was happy liberalism. <laughs> Pleasant liberalism, <laughs> or maybe happy clappy liberalism. I wanted to see that. But it comes to your point, sir. What has happened over the generations of where we had the wonders of people, including those in, in the past from rooms like this, who sought to alleviate the lives of the poor, to alleviate the people who've come from foreign lands, is that you've lost your way. You have forgotten what you have come here to do and you have narrowed your view to the extent where in this Brexit campaign you decided it was rich against poor, the educated against the uneducated. It was those living in the metropolitan elite houses like Emily Thornberry who would criticise someone with a white van and an English flag, which is exactly what she did when she was campaigning down against the, uh, the, uh, the UKIP candidate at the time. I, I try not to talk about them too much at the moment. <laughs> and we have made a division in this country where you say you were looking out for the poor, but in fact you were not. You were cozying yourselves together, bringing your own people to support themselves, which is why I'm saying that when you had the European Union, unelected people in the Commission making the laws, you had people leaving the parliaments in one country and becoming an MEP within a few weeks. That isn't the true definition of liberalism. That's the true definition of intellectual and monetary protectionism. You have become part of people who just simply want to protect your own futures and careers for a smaller group of people. And I ask you to stop, think and engage once more. That would then bring out the beauty of what some of you would say is classical liberalism. Or those like yourself, Stephen, who believe that it's socialism that has the answer. But the reality is at the end of the day, we have to have humanism. We have to have a belief that we are all on this planet, not just there in one group. Uh, on that point, sir. Absolutely. So you talk a lot about the NHS and why it's so beneficial and how we have to care for other people. Then why is it specifically liberals in America who support greater access to health care for the entire nation and conservatives on the other side who oppose it and are trying to take it down as I see here today? I look at the NHS here as a system that everybody agreed that we would pay into together. I recognize that if there was a time when the United States had followed our pattern, you might well have also achieved that. But what has happened in Obamacare, as I understand it, with the limited reading that I've got, is that the costs that have been imposed on the whole of middle of America have found millions of people now who have decided that they can no longer afford to pay the insurance premiums. So in trying to do good for one, you have harmed another. And therein lies the problem once more. It was imposed without listening. It was imposed by a group within the House and the Congress who didn't try to venture out into Omaha or Ohio or Idaho. They didn't want to go to the Rust Belts and understand what was happening to those people. They were quite happy to have those people way above me. Hopefully I'm going to take him so he doesn't jump on me from there. <laughs> I'll, I'll take that. Well, it may well have been their fault, but how was I to know? Because I certainly wasn't campaigning in the United States. I certainly wasn't inv involved or engaged in there. What I am saying is that we have a situation in this country where we're looking at what I believe is that liberalism 
in whatever form you look at it. Conservatism, classical liberalism, and the ideas have been taken over by people who've contracted themselves into small groups who believe that they are the elitists because they make the decisions. And in doing so, they have tried to insult a nation and a people within that. We've heard those at Glastonbury who said the chavs have won. During the uh, march, so-called for wanting to bring us back to the European Union, you had people at uh, posters that said, old white people, please die. Do not get into the language that I faced in one debate where I had people from Hope Not Hate shouting to me that I was an Oreo, a coconut, and a disgrace to my race. I'm the disgrace to no race. I'm a member of the human race. And if you believe in liberalism, you get rid of those views as well. Champion the idea, but do not retreat to where you've gone to, which is an elitist island.